Hey, what's up everyone? This is Silver Slayer. Thank you for tuning into this video. Now, there are a lot of people that don't like gold and silver. It goes against the grain. It's kind of the rebellious investment, and it's a direct threat to the U.S. dollar because when you do invest in a precious metals, you are in complete control of your finances. And if you understand how money works, how the government works, when you're, a sla when you're in debt, you're a slave to the system. So they want to still control you, but they can't when you transfer your fiat dollars into gold and silver. So you, I hope you understand why people will portray, try to paint the picture that gold and silver is a bad investment, it's risky, it's bearish, because it's definitely not. There's a lot of potential, there's many reasons why silver and gold are extremely valuable, so don't listen to the noise. You get what I'm saying? So anyways, we have a, a crazy video today, uh, the devil's metal. Have you ever been, have you ever heard silver be called the devil's metal? I definitely have it. I've, I've heard it called the poor man's gold. It's gold's little brother, um, you know, gold's long lost cousin. I've never been, I've never heard it called the devil's metal. Now, this is going to be a very good article because there's five key points for investing into silver. And, and I think we're, I think we're going to break some good stuff down in this video. Hopefully by the end of the video, you will have a, a greater insight on not only why to invest in silver, but also how. So, before we jump into this, make sure to smash that like button. Let's see if this video can get 300 likes. 300 likes. That, that, that's a crazy light goal, I know. But for some reason, I think we can do it on this video. With that said, let's jump into it. So, the devil's metal. Five key points for investing into silver. So and by the way, this was written yesterday. All of my all of my articles that I, I you know I talk about on this channel are written the same day or maybe the day before at the latest. So people often call silver the poor man's gold, and that you know that that's so true. The thing is though, silver is more affordable, right? It, it's more affordable. It's not the poor man's gold. It's just more affordable version of gold, which is also more volatile. So. The gray metal often does move in the shadow of its shiny, useless, yellow cousin. <laughs> I like how they said useless, by the way. But when it comes to volatility, silver outpaces gold every time. So it's also known as gold on steroids, if not gold on crack. And that's funny because I don't know if they watch my videos, but I was always the one that said, you know, silver's like gold on steroids. It's a more exaggerated version of gold. Um, I, I guess that was probably, I mean, I, I doubt that they got that from me. But that is a saying that I've always used, and I never really saw it anywhere else. But it, it, it's, it's a great point. It's a great uh, way to put it because it is more exaggerated, right? It's a more dramatic version of gold. So the devil's metal, in fact. So did last week's 15% plunge in prices offer a hellish bargain? Whose tune does it dance to anyways? I mean, it, it makes sense, right? And I don't want to scare people away. I don't want people to think that it's too risky. You know, you want to play it safer. Because when you invest in the precious metals at all, whether it's gold, silver, platinum, palladium, copper, no matter what, at least you're investing into something that has value. Money's something that cannot be created nor destroyed. So as soon as you transfer your fiat money into gold and silver, you're just transferring money to money. When you invest into stocks or even crypto, you know whatever the whatever on that front line, you're transferring fiat money into a company or you know something along those lines, the blockchain, um, an idea. But gold and silver, it, it's concrete, no pun intended, I guess pun intended, it's concrete evidence that there is value. And that's the safest, smartest investment in my opinion, right? Something that has actual value. So, thanks to this year's remarkable swings, interest in silver investing has never grown so strong. And that's so true, I agree, 100%. Over the seven days to midnight Monday, demand to buy silver on bullion vault beats gold by 35 percent so it's definitely got it's in the spotlight it's in the limelight it's attracting people and i think that's mainly because the bitcoin boom uh convinced people that investing can be profitable and then apps like robin hood uh, make 
gold and silver extremely easy to invest in so younger generations that also want a chance to get the slice of the silver pie are getting in so selling was also greater beating gold by 47 percent in cash terms so a lot of people selling got that quick buck i don't agree with it i think if you're selling right now you're missing out on a lot of money but that's the numbers so net net so net to net that saw bullion vault users as a group put 12 and a half million into silver since monday morning last week versus 10.9 million for gold and i want to make a quick point it's really cool that th this you know this company this site um is using their data because then we can get on a on a much broader scale what's going on and they can give us kind of you know their details their their statistics and then we can compare them to what's actually happening and, and we can get some good insight from that right so this is new. The world's largest single provider of allocated bullion to private investors. We have never seen demand for the more industrial metal beat its safe haven cousin like this. But it does in fact extend a surge starting in summer last year. And I definitely remember that. If you do too, right? The total value of bullion vaults clients, silver holdings uh, rising 110% from September 2019, now $785 million against 67% growth in gold, which is $2.7 billion. So what is driving this surge in private investor demand in short-term trading? A friend last week asked quick primer on the devil's metal. Here's the five key points I suggest he considers. So number one, so that was a little intro. Hopefully that wasn't too long. Uh, I try to make my videos very quality now. I don't want to just rat, just fly through everything and not really talk about it because there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of content. There's a lot of stuff that's going on, subject matter. And I want to break it down and really explain it and get your ideas make sure you put that in the comments as well what what are your ideas when we're going over some of these things I would love to hear it and I'm sure other people on this video would love to hear it as well so number one silver supply and demand we know s supply and demand is definitely one of the most influential factors affecting precious metals and especially with silver because it's a smaller market right silver is a much smaller market than gold but since it's used just as if not much more than gold you can see how the volatility really plays into silver's effect that doesn't always mean it's a good thing though it could be bad because it could go, it could also drop extremely fast to the downside so silver like gold was used as money for thousands of years until the 20th century since then their main uses have diverged Silver now has a zero central bank demand, while 12% of global gold demand has come from monetary reserves over the last decade. Instead, it finds nearly 60% of annual end use from industry, compared to less than 10% in gold, the rest being made by jewelry and investment. So we know that, right? We know gold is used for more for jewelry, coinage, bars, earrings, necklaces, whatever. Silver is more in the industry, the technological side of things. And you've got to think about as we advance technologically, that only means we're going to need more and more and more silver. So their supply profiles also differ. Two-thirds of silver mining production is byproduct, means that it's found by accident, of digging for other metals, notably gold or copper. See, they're not trying to look for silver. There's no focal silver mines. They're trying to find stuff that's going to put some money in their pocket, gold. That means that since nobody's focusing on finding silver, the only silver that they are finding, that they are mining, is by accident, right? You get what I'm saying? It's literally, if they find some silver on the side, they'll take it, but they're not looking for it, which is extremely alarming when we look at how high the silver demand especially looking forwards is going to be with 5g technology electric vehicles solar panels this can get very dangerous very quickly so added together this means silver's total supply to the market can't respond as directly as gold changes to its price but clear there's nothing like a shortage in either metal stockpiles and markets or bars are, are plentiful but the thing is the circulating supply of silver is, is is draining out much quicker than gold because a lot of people scrap gold they res, they resell it reuse it rescrap it recycle it silver they don't do so much who's actually spending the time to, to to take some silver out of a laptop or a cell phone you're not it's you'll get pennies to the dollar gold you might make a couple bucks though same, same with going through jewelry drawers go through you know you, you're, you're ready to pawn some jewelry whatever no one's gonna pawn the silver you'll get like two dollars if, if at most gold you can make some good money though so a lot of gold is being recirculated where a lot of silver is lost in technology so number two the gold to silver ratio we saw the gold to silver ratio as high as 125 to 1 in March. Craziest. That, that means that was the cheapest 
silver's ever been relative to gold. Never seen anything like it. Even with the ratio above a hundred to one, means that it's too it's too exaggerated, and it's going the bump that that's going to correct right. So with the gold with gold rising from fifteen to one in the, in the medieval period to fifty to one in the twentieth century, now sixty five to one on average since the millennium. And here's what the last century looks like on an annual average basis. So here's annual average. 1914, around 20, 30, 40 to 1, right? Um, then you get in 1930, 1930s. This is, and you see that 100 to 1 level, and that's 10-year rolling average, price divided by silver price. And this is right when FDR changed the gold to silver ratio from 16 to 1 to 75 to 1. And that, that was crazy. That was a game changer, right? And then you can see it drops back down. Then obviously in 2011, if you, if you look, 2011 spikes. And, and, and it's the same cycle. Note that gold, unlike silver, had a fixed price in dollar terms until 1971. So the gold to silver ratio jumped as silver crashed in the Great Depression of the 1930s, like I was talking about, only to swing back down as gold lost purchasing power along with the dollar until its releases it's released three decades later when uh, tricky dicky nixon abandoned metal backed money at last so on a basis on a daily basis current prices put one ounce of gold at 80 times that one ounce of silver while that extends the underlying trend many people trading and starting to invest in silver today think it looks undervalued against its longer term average and that's so true. It certainly looks cheap on March's crash when, on a daily basis, gold to silver ratio was 125 to 1, like I mentioned. The gold to silver ratio is actually very, very, it's a very good tool to use to see whether silver is the better investment at that period in time or if gold is. I, I always mention this. And there's actually a lot more about the gold, gold to silver ratio than even this, this little you know section talked about. Uh, just to highlight a little bit. Back in biblical days, you know, medieval days, uh, Egyptian days, the gold to silver ratio was two and a half part silver equals one part gold. So it was two and a half to one. Back in those times, they saw silver as magical because it could purify water the way it responded with different elements. It was, it was magic to them. So silver was actually back in the day extremely valuable, almost as valuable as gold was. Then over time, the ratio was 16 to one. And then when FDR got into office, and the 30s changed from 16 to 1 to 75 to 1, and then it's never changed back. A couple times in 1980 and 2011, obviously, when silver hit $50, but besides that, not. So, number three is silver's volatility is 80% greater than gold's. I mean, that's true. This could be used for the downside as well, like I mentioned. It, it, silver is gold on steroids. It, it really is. If gold's going to rise 10 15%, silver's rising 25-30%. But it also goes on the downside. If gold's going to drop 15, 20%, silver's going to drop 30, 40%. So there's more opportunity, but there is more risk. You can see how there is more potential there because it expands greater. So if gold and silver are sitting at a certain price and the markets start to rally, silver is going to rally higher. So if you bought gold and silver, you'd make more money off of that silver rally if you sold it at, at the peak or at the top. So. Despite their fundamental differences, gold and silver prices still tend to move in the same direction. And that's the interesting part. They're used for different things. The markets are different, right? They're categorized extremely different. Gold is a monetary metal used only during times of economic crisis as a safe haven. Silver is an industrial metal used for so many things industrially. So the, the markets are very, very, very different, but they still... Uh, they're still correlated in price, which is interesting. And I think one day when those prices do start to start to separate, that's when we're going to see silver's true value really shine. So over the last 50 years, in fact, silver prices have moved in the same direction as gold's 76.1% of the time a day, 75% of the time on a 12-month view. So the same forces which drive investment money into or out of gold tend to move silver prices too, especially real rate interest offered by cash or bonds. Because when money itself is losing purchasing power to inflation, people turn to physical precious metals as a way of storing value used throughout history and across all cultures. The big difference lies in volatility. 
because when gold rises or falls by 1%, silver averaged a gain or loss by 1.8%. That makes silver price charts look m far more erratic, suddenly plunging or jumping seemingly without warning. That's why silver is known as the devil's metal among hedge funds and other speculative traders, especially those betting on its direction with leveraged futures or option markets contracts. Last week, for instance, marked gold's third steepest weekly plunge of the last five years. Silver fell almost three times harder in percentage terms. So, roll back to the pandemic, you know, February, March, in the financial markets, silver bullion sank 39% in four weeks. And, but you also have to remember its spike was 65%, you know, higher in four weeks ending August 6th. So, why would anyone think they need to leverage these moves by betting on silver through futures, options, CFDs, and beyond me? And I, I'm the same way, right? Just buy it and hold it. There's no, there's no point to overcomplicate it, make things confusing. You're not going to make much money if you are, if you are trying to get the quick, you know, the quick bang for your buck. Don't look at it from from leveraging precious metals from from marginal trading, gold and silver. That that it's kind of contradicting. Gold and silver should be more of a hedge against inflation. I'm not going to tell you how to invest. That side of it just doesn't make sense to me. But anyways, but too small is why anyone would buy silver coins or bars. With up to 20% VAT or VAT, value added tax, sales tax added to their costs in Europe, plus dreadful 10% spreads between dealers and uh, buy and sell quotes, there is a cheaper, safer way for investment. Owning and selling it for just cheap, instant, simply as well. And that's buying the physical metal, right? Number four, bull market in context. So we see the 1980-2011 spikes, you know, silver went vertical, touched $50, and that's the only two times I was talking about just a second ago where silver really spiked or the gold to silver ratio really uh, dropped. So um, let's kind of let's kind of go around here. So... Bottom line, right? And, uh, this is where they talk about, you know, 5G technology, electric vehicles. This is all going to drive demand for silver, right? All going to demand, you know, electric vehicles, solar panels, Joe Biden with the green, uh, the green revolution. All of these things are going to drive silver demand up. But you remember the supply is diminishing. The supply is shortening. There's a silver shortage. We saw it earlier this year. So bottom line. Gold's timeless use as the ultimate store of value shines out amid 2020's rolling crisis. Today's unprecedented central bank and government stimulus put a spotlight on silver's stronger industrial use and its potential in a high-octane infl infl inflation play. So that provided uh, the industrial growth and inflation can be conjured up the white by the wizards of central banking. They're in such a desperate magic that they really don't fear that they can't, but succeed or fail, they're very likely to conjure up fresh chaos from the devil's metal one way or another. Number five is how to buy silver, and, and this is this is very easy. Go on Atmex, Jam Bullion, Provident Metals, Modern Coin Mart, SD Bullion, and click buy. When those coins or bars arrive at your house, put them in a safe or a safety deposit box, or bury it in your backyard. Well, just hold on to it. It's that simple. It's that simple. No need to go into any of this stuff. Silver-backed ETFs going on some exchange, bullion balling where your, your gold or silver is held halfway across the world from some third party custodian you don't even know his first name no just just buy it you are in complete control and like i said in the very beginning of the video that's why that's what makes silver and gold so valuable and so beneficial because you are in complete control of your wealth no matter you know if you can't hold it you don't own it and that's with anything in the world if you cannot hold it in your hands you don't own it someone else does and that, that's scary, especially when money's involved, especially when your financial freedom is involved. Get in complete control of your wealth, and that is with the physical bullion of precious metals. That's where the real value is. That's where the value is. No matter who says that coin is worth what, that's irrelevant because the true coin's value is the metal inside of it. So if you don't have that metal in your hand, then someone else does, and that does not mean that you own it, especially for people who look at this from emergency situations, SHTF scenario crisis. You got to be, you got to buy the physical bullion. And that's all I can say. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you thought this video was educational, informational, or at least entertaining, make sure to smash the like button. I think I might cook up a couple more videos a day, so stay tuned for those as well. Make sure you subscribe. We are on the road to, uh, I think, what, 34,000 subscribers, 32,000, something like that, 30,000 maybe, I don't know, around there though. Uh, I, I cannot thank you guys enough. It's honestly, 
it's honestly crazy um, that, that this channel has grown so much. I'm going to keep putting in the work, trying to make better quality content for you guys day in and day out. Um, and that's why my videos are a little bit longer, the thumbnails are a little bit better, um, the, the sound quality is a little bit better, and the, the topics are a little bit better. Because I'm really trying to make stuff that's, that's, listened, that's listenable and enjoyable, right, and, and really teachable and educational, right? Uh, so so I, I hope that you guys are enjoying these videos more. I really am trying to make better stuff. So if you think I am doing better, if you think the videos are more entertainable or listenable, let me know. I need that, that kind of feedback. So anyways, thanks for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.